In this video, we take you on our journey from London to Montego Bay, Jamaica, flying upper class with Virgin Atlantic. The flight from London to Jamaica was 10 hours, including a stop in the Bahamas. Upper class Virgin Atlantic is a mix between business and first class, and the main advantages are the lie flat bed, 2 times 32 kilo checked bags, can you believe it? Oh my gosh! Fast track private security and access to the Virgin Atlantic Clubhouse at London Heathrow, which we were really excited to try out. We booked this holiday 6 months in advance and it was the first time flying upper class so as you can imagine our excitement levels were off the charts. We got to terminal 3 at Heathrow 4 hours before our flight time which is when bag drop opens. We wanted to make sure we get the most of the Virgin Clubhouse lounge at the airport. We'd heard great things about it so we wanted to maximise our time there. There is a separate terminal entrance for upper class passengers, but the shuttle bus from the car park doesn't go there and an Uber was costing around £30 to drop us off, so we just decided to go into the main Terminal 3 entrance. We followed the signs and found the designated upper class bag drop area. It's super easy to find and you can already see that the queues were starting to build up in the economy area. After bag drop, we were directed to the elevator with the red carpet which takes you up to the Virgin Atlantic private security area. This was the fastest and most efficient security screening we've ever been through. All the stuff we came across so far were pleasant and friendly and I'm happy to say that it continued throughout our whole trip. Within 15 minutes of bag drop, we were already in duty free. We were so hungry and as I mentioned, we wanted to experience the lounge for as long as possible. So we headed straight to lounge H. That's H for happy. There are lots of clear directions to the lounges and all the lounges are signposted so it's super easy to find. At the entrance to the clubhouse, we were greeted by Virgin staff who checked our documents and then led us into the lounge. As you can see, it's a pretty big space. There are different types of seating areas dotted around, so whether you're there for business or pleasure, you have suitable space to work or relax in. I'll show you more of that in a bit, but first let's get some breakfast. It was 7am and our flight wasn't until 11am, so there was plenty of time for some food. It was a little early for alcohol for us, but there is a fully stocked bar where you can order from. Nitish had the full English and I had the veggie breakfast. It's all table service, so you can order via the QR code on the table or you can ask the waiter to take your order. After breakfast, we went for a stroll up to the loft and found the garden terrace area where you can go outside and see the runway. Luckily, it was a nice morning, so we spent some time up here and saw some planes taking off. The sound of planes taking off always makes me so excited. We then headed back into the lounge and here you can see the loft area which has some casual seats to chill on. We walked to the opposite side of the lounge, past the food counter and the magazine table. The bathrooms are just straight ahead on the right past the departure screens. The bathrooms were super clean and the cubicles were very spacious too.
On the other end of the lounge, we found a super cute egg chair and the retreat area. The retreat area is a quiet space where you can relax, charge your electronics and even have a snooze. We spent most of our time in these pods. There is also a gym area where you will find peloton bikes, with a view of the runway we saw from outside. It's a nice view, but I'm not sure I'd want to do a spin class before a flight. We were so happy we got to enjoy the clubhouse for a good few hours. If, on your return journey, you fly up a class on an overnight flight, you can use the Revivals Lounge, which has shower facilities and a breakfast menu. Unfortunately, although our return flight was overnight, the flight was delayed and the lounge is only open until 12.30pm, so we didn't get to experience that lounge this time. There's always next time though! When it was time, we headed to gate 24, but on the way there, we were told the gate number had changed and we had to walk 20 minutes in the other direction. We didn't mind though, as it was a way of getting some steps in before the long flight. When we got to the gate, we boarded first and the whole process was super quick. We were greeted by the lovely cabin crew with smiles. You can see the bar area here, where you can get snacks and drinks at any time during the flight. We turned left into the aircraft, which was lit up in purple mood lighting, and proceeded towards our seats. We sat in seats 3A and 4A. On the return journey, we sat in 8K and 9K, which is on the opposite side. The seats in upper class are configured in a herringbone shape, which means they're facing away from the window. At first, this seems strange, but it's actually really comfortable. You get lots of privacy as the seats in front of you are facing the other way. The size of the seats is subjective depending on the individual. I had ample space to sit, lie down and sit up on the bed. If I wanted to turn around and look out of the window, I could. Nitya says that he found the seat comfortable even though he didn't have quite as much space as I did. In terms of the seat, you can have it upright in the chair position, in reclining position and also as a flat bed to sleep on. For the latter, you have to get out of the seat and ask the cabin crew to make the bed for you. They put on the sheets and duvet for you too. We both agree that being able to lie down during this long haul flight was really relaxing and made a big difference to how we felt after the flight. One thing I really love about the upper class arrangement is you can sit opposite each other and have a drink and chat whilst in the air. It almost felt like we were in a coffee shop rather than 30 something thousand feet in the air. cabin crew come round with champagne or juice before the flight. There's a decent amount of storage space around the seat and a small table to keep your drink on. The touchscreen comes out if you want to watch TV lying down or sitting up. The Vera entertainment system is good. There are a variety of old and new films including world cinema and a good variety of music to choose from. The handset comes out, but I didn't really use that during the flight. The dining table can be pulled out when in use and goes back in to give you space again. It did take me a while to figure out how the table comes out. On to the food during the flight. There's a good variety of food and drinks available during the flight, and there's also an option to select your meals online in case you have any dietary requirements. The return journey had a similar menu, but with more of a Caribbean theme. I had the salad with warm bread for starters. How cute are these little salt and pepper aeroplanes? For mains, we had the achari chicken. 
My first impression was average, but after mixing everything together, I actually really enjoyed the meal. For dessert, I had the chocolate and Earl Grey delish. I didn't care for the sauce, but the chocolate was delicious. On the flight, you also get a nice little goodie bag. We got one on both legs of the journey. It contains an eye mask, socks, lip balm, a toothbrush and toothpaste. And during the overnight flight, you also get a set of pyjamas, which we both changed into before we headed off to sleep. Flying upper class was such a great experience and by far the best flight we've ever been on. After the flight, passport control took around 20 minutes in Montego Bay, but we waited nearly an hour at baggage claim as there was some issue with the carousel. Eventually, we made it onto our transfer bus and on to enjoy the rest of our holiday. On the return journey, we wanted to check out the shared Club Mobe airport lounge that upper class passengers get access to. It's shared with other airlines and you can also purchase access to the lounge if you wanted. Bag drop was super speedy in Montego Bay as was the fast track security. Soon we found ourselves in duty free where we bought some souvenirs and walked around for a bit. We then headed to Club Mobe. To get access to the lounge, you just tell them that you're upper class Virgin Atlantic passengers. They check your boarding pass and then you take the elevator or stairs down one level for the Virgin Lounge. To be honest, we were a bit underwhelmed with the lounge here, especially after our experience at Heathrow. There wasn't a large selection of food, just some crisps and light snacks. There was a bar, but not a lot of hot drinks on offer. The seats were really comfortable though, and it was quiet, so that was excellent. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to know where we stayed and what we think of Jamaica, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one!